Welcome back everyone. We're going to start on average rate of change of a function. If you drive a distance of 140 miles in two hours, what's your average speed? The reality is that you're probably not going to keep a consistent rate as you move or as you drive. So suppose you take a car trip and record the distance that you travel every few minutes. This graph below shows a possible outcome for that data. The distance d you have traveled is a function of time t. What is your average speed between 0 hours and 2 hours since you started driving? So the question is, if you start with time 0 and you compare that with your distance after 2 hours, if you connect these dots, it won't be a curve like the graph given. It would be more like a straight line because that's finding the average speed between 0 and 2 hours. If you wanted to calculate this average speed mathematically, it would be y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Notice that this is the same as the change in y over the change in x. Some of you might have seen this before. It's basically called m, the slope, or rise over run. We will have a rise of 110 minus 0. That's how far we have shifted vertically. So to find the difference, it's the end value minus the beginning value in the y direction, and then the end value 2 minus the beginning value 0. If I reduce this, I get, or simplify this, I get 110 over 2, which simplifies to 55. Now remember, our vertical distance is miles, our horizontal distance is hours, so this is miles, 55 miles per hour. Notice that my average rate of change became a linear rate, meaning that we basically simplified our data to show an average rate over two hours. In the set question, we're asked, what's your average speed between one hour to four hours since you began to drive. So now we're looking at one hour to four hours. And we can use the same idea of y2 minus y1, where if we're just looking at that one piece of data, it would be a constant rate. So 160 is our final height or rise minus 70 all over 4 minus 1. This gives me 90 over 3 or 30 miles per hour. The average rate of change of the function y equals f of x between x equals a and x equals b where a is less than b is as follows. The average rate of change is equal to the change in y over the change in x, or we can say f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. I would take a few minutes to make sure you can reproduce the graph here on the right, because this is a generic function showing the relationship between an input and an output on any given curve, where a is your domain for the smaller value, and b is the domain for the larger value. That corresponds to an input and an output along the curve. Now generic just means just like soda, if you want a generic soda, you wouldn't buy Coca-Cola or Pepsi. You would buy Shasta or something like that that's, you know, owned by Safeway. So in math, we're looking for a generic rate of change 
between two points on a graph. So linear functions have a constant average rate of change, which we call slope. In other functions, the average rate of change is the slope of the secant line between x equals a and x equals b. Now let b minus a equal h. If you solve this statement, b minus a equals h, for b, you get b is equal to a plus h. And we can see that the average rate of change can be calculated by evaluating the difference quotient formula. We've already used the difference quotient in a previous assignment. However, now we are connecting it to what it actually represents, which is the rate of change between two points to give a generic slope. We want to find the average rate of change of the function f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 2 between negative 2 and 0. Well, we know that our function can give us outputs. So let's take a, we'll let a equal negative 2 and b equals 0. a is our smaller number and b is our larger number. Let's find f of negative 2, which is our f of a. That's going to be negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 plus 2. Now let's find f of b, which is f of 0. f of 0 is going to be 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 2. If we simplify f of negative 2, we're going to have 4 plus 8 plus 2, which is equal to 14. For f of 0, we're going to get 0 plus 0 plus 2. So if we use our formula, we know that we need f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Well, we know f of a is 14. We know that f of a plus h is going to be 0, that's b. F of, <laughs> f of b was f of 0. So we're going to say 2 minus 14 all over h. Well, what do we know h is equal to? h is b minus a. b was 0 and a was negative 2. This will give me negative 12 over 2 which is equal to negative 6. So the slope of the line between negative 2 and 0 would be the rate of change between negative 2 and 0 on the parabola.